We are live. Welcome to Willow episode 8 thoughts and the episode is called the Children of the Worm. Ah, right. No the or one the, but not to these. One the not to the. Um yes. So, spoilers for the entire season in this video and yeah uh i thought this was a really great season finale currently uh season two has not been um confirmed i think it's a fine enough place to stop because they did resolve like they got eric back um you know uh elora now knows how to use magic Kit has been, you know, everybody's gone through growth. Um, and, and the, yeah, the, the main conflict has been resolved. Um, yeah, you know, at the first episode, they, they said, you know, we have to go to, oh, I forget if it was the first episode, but earlier in the show, they said, we have to go to Immemorial City, we have to free Eric, you know, the crone is going to try to influence him, and, yeah. Um, so, yeah, overall, I, you know, I'm I'm basically okay with not getting another. I mean, it's not it's not gonna keep me awake at night. I would like to see another season or or a film. They've been talking about maybe it'll be a, a movie instead. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess that is it for the. So um, yeah, I um, leading up to this, I rewatched the movie and the first seven episodes. So I have now watched the first seven episodes twice each, and this episode once. And, yeah, I was wondering if this episode would have any main characters die since none of the other episodes... Like, I don't know, maybe some people thought that Ballantyne was going to be in more of the show, but he wasn't really established as a main character. He wasn't part of the ensemble. Um, yeah, um... You know, I figured plot armor could only go so far, but yeah. Um, I mean, it's not... I'm okay with with it. It just felt like, there's, you know, the movie does have... Right, in addition to spoiling the show, I'm also spoiling the movie. The movie does have some major characters die. Um, uh, one thing I do kind of wish... Like, I, I let the entire episode play, you know, just in case there was post credits or something we don't know if mims is still alive i that is something that i kind of wish cuz you know the the end of the movie does show him returning to to be with his family i i think it would have been okay y yeah maybe if they just if they cut back to mims you know and and you know someone is like why why are you still waiting for willow i'm telling you he's not coming back and she's like he came back last time he's coming back this time and then end credit or something, but to not have it at all, because I really, it, you know, we don't know if Ballantyne did anything to her, but certainly he wanted information, and he wasn't getting it from her, and then Willow got this creepy vision that was definitely like the nightmare of, you know, that that's the, the, the evil trying to break him, so, yeah. Um, let's see. So, so yeah, um, a couple of things I realize while rewatching the first seven episodes. I think writing that Mad Mardigan sacrificed himself to protect others is a good way to write it out, since the actor couldn't appear. He's adventurous, and in the film he was said to serve no one. Sacrificing himself for the good of others is character growth. And by the end of the film, he is also willing to, to risk himself to, to protect others, but, but yeah. And let's see, yeah, uh, through some of the, the season, Kit was Elo uh, jealous of Elora for the attention of a man, Matt Mardigan. But in the end, she realizes they're better off working together. I really appreciate that. Good message for young women. So, uh, if I understand correctly, basically the reason that Willow has not become this, you know, amazing sorcerer that... You know, because, yeah, in the film, like, uh, uh, Russell, I guess, yeah, Russell tells him, you are on the way to become a great sorcerer, you know, you can't, 
but yeah, between the movie and this show, he worried that if he left to train with Rosella Shalindra, I think is how he pronounced it, he might lose his daughter since he lost his son when he left to help in the movie, and apparently also his wife. So, so yeah. And yeah, on rewatch of episode 5, the Bone Reavers are basically a disenfranchised minority. Their cause is lied about by the government. You know, the government know that they would get, you know, the Bone Reavers get a lot of support, if not for the lies. If you aren't against the Bone Reavers and you get to know them, you may well get along with them. You know, uh, yeah, and it's not saying that there is no such thing as evil in this world. The crone is evil for wanting slaves. The trolls are evil because if they kidnap someone important, they will hand them over to someone evil. You know, they, they are they are evil adjacent. Well, yeah, yeah, they do also have slaves in the mines, don't they? So, yeah, yeah, evil. Uh, and and again, you know, like I said with the episode, yeah, uh, slave labor is an evil thing to to have, and that is. You know, that's the kind of criticism we need today, you know, because there are a lot of large corporations that have people who are practically slaves, you know, so, so yeah. And let's see, so, yeah, the Bone Reavers ultimately didn't hurt any of the people that, that they, you know, yeah, they, they took them, they, they, you know, in order to, to gain control of the situation once you know the the fellowship entered their territory once they realized they shared goals and belonged in the same in-group they threw a party for them you know we end up questioning if anything we thought about the bone reavers was ever true i mean yeah they wear masks because they want to scare off government agents they're not used to encountering people who don't work for the government you know so so yeah that is it for stuff I had about the other episode. I, I guess I'll just very briefly... Let's see. So, this is it. Yes. Ah, uh, nope. This is it. Here we go. Okay. Uh, so, let's see. Um, notes from the watching earlier episodes. And then... There we go. So, notes on this specific episode. There we go. So, yeah, that is what we're going to get into now. I still don't know why occasionally this thing shows up, but it doesn't seem to interrupt the stream, so whatever. Okay, so, um, yeah, I got to thinking uh, based on, um, uh, I guess, was yeah, yeah, episode 8. And seven. Um, maybe the crone really did used to look like Krung, and she used that form to lure Eric. You know, in, in apparently she used to be a, a princess. And that's actually, yeah, um, Willow said earlier, the crone may have originally been evil, but there is nothing left of that. Originally been human. Holy crap, I swear I got enough sleep last night. Anyway... The crone may originally have been human, but whatever humanity used to be is now replaced with evil. So, you know, she uses the human form that she used to have to appeal to, to Eric. And, and yeah, apparently she was a princess. And I mean, if if what she said, yeah, I guess maybe the 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 other agents of the worm... Wait, no, c yeah, because they follow the crone now. I don't know if they just, like, decided to... to we, yeah, yeah, when she was the chief agent, or maybe there was another original chief agent. Um, yeah, I, I... If it was, like, feature length, I would probably be able to remember it all, but I am not great at remembering information spread across this many episodes. But I do realize that Crone, you know, the whole Crone Worm thing, Harbinger, that was, con you know, that, that was apparently what Bavmorda was working for as well. So, so yeah. Um, anyway, you know, one way or another, the princess ended up, yeah, and, and it also, you know, she, she said that it started small, but then the 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 cult started doing really awful things, you know. And that again, because you know, you got with the with the bone reaver thing, you have to be careful 
not to be implying, oh yeah, yeah if, if there's someone that the government doesn't like or, you know, they're, they're fine. You just got to, you just got to get to know them. No, not always. Um, there is such a thing as, you know, yeah. Honestly, the Bone Reavers reminded me a lot of, like, the Black Panthers, you know, this kind of, yeah. Um, and I think with the, with the cult, you know, that's probably supposed to be more like one of these, you know, alt-right kind of, you know, yeah, yeah, like, um, I don't know, uh, Proud Boys, Boogaloo Boys, um, yeah, I'm not the first person to point out that they choose really ridiculous names, but that that's maybe in order to get people to not take them as seriously so that they are able to do worse things and get away with it. But, but yeah, you know, like, if you just, if the only thing you hear about them is, oh, you know, they're going to try to protect people from Antifa, you know, oh, I mean, that sounds good. But if you then look at, you know, they are instigating violence, they are trying to, you know, they're clearly trying to be the brown shirts, basically. And that's what, you know, uh, Bone Reavers are Black Panthers, whereas the the Children of the Worm, with only one the are the uh, Boogaloo Boys or, or this kind of thing. Because they are trying to take power, and they are using violence to this... And, you know, yeah, they lie about who they are. They put on, in the case of the crone, a young face, a, a uncorrupted face. But, yeah, you know, they they used to be, you know, I'm sure, you know, travel back in time. Maybe they didn't used to be, you know, I'm, I'm sure there was a time. I, I, I personally don't believe that there is such a thing as inherent evil. Not in the real world, only, you know, fictional creatures, maybe, really. But, you know, in the real world, there's no such thing as evil. Animals are basically neutral. And human beings, we we can choose good, we can choose evil. Proud Boys, Boogaloo Boys, Dem Boys chose evil, and now they've chosen to stick with it. You know, if you're, like, former, you know, there, wasn't there... At least one person who left, or am I thinking of a former incel? There's there's people who've left these organizations and have since decried them. I think, you know, some of them, as long as they legitimately have changed, you know, t turned a new leaf. If, if it's all old leaves, I don't think we should listen to them. But if it seems genuine, yeah, um, try to work with them, try to, you know, because they might be good allies in taking down the the groups and oh right uh just to be super clear i don't have a problem with like political discourse like if you if you just have a different opinion you know i'm progressive if you're not progressive that's fine i'm not saying you're like dangerous i i'm specifically talking about you know proud boys boogaloo boys and incels people who have not only communicated their message online but have chosen to use violence in order to to try to um you know basically force other people to do what they want or in the in the case of incels maybe more getting revenge on people that they they hate with just yeah I have empathy for anyone who was bullied, and apparently some incels that started as them being targets for bullies. But what you do is you try to fight bullying. You don't become the new bully. You know, incels basically want to bully women. So it's, you you haven't you're not making. You know that's that's the worst possible response to being bullied is to become a bully yourself. And again, keep in mind not only like online discourse, they are actually there was. I forget his name, but I also don't really want to give him more... You know, he wanted attention for, for shooting. You know, he grabbed a gun, he went and... and well, was it the thing where he wasn't able to shoot women and then some misogynist said, Ah, oh, see, he only shot men. He didn't shoot... Yeah, because he can get to the women. You know, it's not, it's not a video game. He doesn't have, like, bullets that can't hurt people that are on his side, like some video games. I love video games. Anyway, um, let's see. Yeah, um... Uh, so, so yeah, uh, back to the beginning of the episode. You know, Eric and the, the crone people are, are there, and I like, like, the, you know, Eric, 
it's it's great because like when you see it's it's not completely clear like is he like pure evil or what exactly at, at the end of the previous episode and apparently according to this episode he hadn't recognized them yet like he's just, and it's like it's it's like foggy like it's all this orangey fog stuff you know he get, he gets a little closer oh hey you guys you know and he goes up and he hugs them and it's like it's kind of funny but also creepy and i really appreciate like the way it's filmed and the the acting like they clearly aren't comfortable with it and that's yeah you know one of the evil choices that you can make in your life as a man is to make women uncomfortable with your presence you know if he actually like looked at their faces he'd be able to tell oh you really don't want me super close right now okay let's you know they're, they're not like screaming get away from me they're it's just like okay let's let's have a conversation let's try to figure out what's going on here they're not okay with him hugging them yet and yet he does so so that's a yeah example of toxic behavior uh let's see I really liked that, you know, at, at the, I have to admit, there was like a second where I was like, wait, why did they, why did Elora and Kit go back to back? But then, you know, it, it, there's there's like a cut and you say, oh, right, obviously, you know, one of them really has to face Eric to figure out what's going on. And the other one really has to face the, the, the creatures in case they start attacking. So it's just, yeah. Um, let's see. The, um, uh... What was the yeah so you know they're they're standing back to back and occasionally they'll swap so like one of them will face Eric and just yeah I I thought that was that was really funny the the way that the, you know and the um let's see it it wasn't quite like yeah I guess they could they couldn't have done the the She Hulk you know tap the tables so everyone turns around to yeah but it was still really funny and. I gotta say, when when Kit started to say to Elora, "Can you like flick your wrist?" At first, I was like, "Oh, she's like," because they. Let's see, what was the thing? I think it was that Elora was trying to talk to. Ah, no, yeah, Kit was trying to talk to. Um, Kit was trying to talk to Eric, and then Elora wanted to talk to him, and she just turned around. Or maybe they swap places or something like that. And I thought Kit was like, give me a signal and we can, we can straight play. I have a little bit more to say to him, but yeah. She's like, flick your wrist and, you know, destroy them. Turn, just, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, we see the, the rest of them discuss whether they should take the leap of faith or not. And, you know, seemingly... You know, yeah, at first, Willow doesn't take the leap. And, you know, at first, I was thinking, I mean, he is he is the oldest of the actors. All of the others are young enough for, like, action and stunts and such. But, you know, it was... Yeah, um... Actually, yeah. Uh... Okay, if you've watched up to this point in the episode, in this video, but you haven't watched the episode, give, you know... Uh, if you haven't watched the episode past when Willow leaves, because I could understand if you're, like... No, I'm watching this for Willow. If he's not going to be in the rest of the episode, he is. He he shows up again. But I get, like, you know, a lot of people watch this because they really want more Willow, you know, rather than just using Willow as, as a sort of entry point for other fantasy. Uh, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, right, her name is Lily, so... Um, yeah, Lily slash Krung, or young Krung, Krung, uh, tried to appeal to Kit and Elora, and that was a, a good... I, I really like, you know, it's a it's bit of a trope, this thing of, you know, ah, the evil will try to tempt you. Um, I, I like the idea that they get, they do get to... Uh, ah, what's the word? Um... They get the the choice, I guess is what I'm. Is that what I'm getting at? Uh, they they um, right. They do hear out. You know what exactly is the the thing that you're suggesting? You know, and only once they know what the evil is is you know suggesting, then they you know again with the bone reavers. At first they thought, you know, oh crap, we're gonna 
we're going to end up as as skull hats or skull masks. Now, yeah, and and like Borman suggests, you know, he's he's like, okay, so we're we, you know this is going to be really dangerous. So if either of you want to make out, I would be down for that. And you know, Graydon and Jade, like I don't think Jade is bi. I I think just yeah, I I think the Kit is the is the only one for her. Um, I'm not sure there's much evidence that Graydon would be by but but yeah so borman is by i 100 percent understand any lgbtq people who say that's way too little representation um yeah uh you know i would i'm, I'm not gonna argue with that i'm not gonna you know i'm i'm straight so it's really not for me to say i do appreciate that it is at least it's this really fun character I could imagine there might be some children watching the the, the show who you know they, like he's their favorite character, and then they hear that, and it maybe starts them thinking, "Wait, is that a thing? Is it okay for a guy to make out with another guy, or a, a guy to make out with a girl who's into girls?" Because at this point, has it been three? Yeah, um, by this episode. There have been three on-screen kisses. Oh, oh, wait, no, the, the second kiss was interrupted. No, yeah, yeah, they... Never mind. There have been two, possibly three, on-screen kisses between Kit and Jade. Clearly, they are into each other. So, yeah, you know, I can't help but wonder. Some kids might see that and be like, maybe, you know, do I want that? You know, am I someone who wants, you know, to, to kiss someone... That's the same crap. I always mess up sex and gender. Um, one of those, as me, you know. So so yeah, and and right. Uh, so yeah, a bunch of really, yeah. Some people apparently think it's wrong for children to to hear that there is such a thing as attraction, you know, as as yeah, homosexual attraction. You know, they think only, you know, first of all, there is tons of straight attraction all over children's entertainment. You know, um, for a while, Disney movies, you know, yeah, for a really long time, Disney movies were ex only ever straight. There was no room for, it, it, certainly if they might gay code a villain, sure, but there's no, there's no positive representation. Um, and yeah, you know, so... If that's okay, then why wouldn't homosexual or bisexual also be okay? It's there's nothing inherently like I. Uh, how far do I want to go down this rabbit hole? Uh, I guess really, really quickly. Okay, um, straight couples can reproduce sexually rather than needing, you know, a um, what's what's it called again? In, in in utero kind of thing, you know, but we really are not looking at a world where we're running out of people, you know, it's like, there, there's a theory that homosexual attraction was, uh, evo you know, evolved because, you know, something was needed for, for, like, population control, you know, and that makes a ton of sense, like, um, we really don't need, you know, if you, if you think, oh, but my country's running out, okay, so let in some immigrants. Uh, yeah, I think that's as much as I'm going to talk about the, uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, so, so, Elora and Kit do both go through the portal and... You know, Kit is told, relax, you know, Eric and Elora are just going to talk. Yeah, I mean, it's their wedding. Married people don't have sex, duh. Let's see. And, yeah, we see the 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 others turn to stone. That was... I, I feel like they, they read... You know, I've, apparently some people thought that the pig transformations in the film... You know, some, some kids got nightmares. I can understand why. It's... Yeah, it's a lot. Um, I feel like they they 
go right up against that here because it's you know the idea of being turned to stone is horrific um i feel like the the visual goes right up against the edge but doesn't cross into some really nightmarish territory um let's see and yeah um sorsha tells kit that she can be free and Elora, you know, it's. I think Eric says something like, you'd only be giving up something you never even wanted in the first place, you know, so, yeah, does sound very appealing kind of thing. Uh, let's see, um, yeah, and, you know, Elora and Eric talk magic, and, yeah, for both of them, you know, it's, we can go back to the way it was before, you know, and that is... That is one of the greatest threats to, to like, the the, uh, the biggest problem in America today are people thinking, no, 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 we just have to move society backwards. That's all. Then everything will be fine. You know, the, the and, and it's, 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 it would hurt an obscene amount of people who have done nothing wrong. You know, things may have been better for like white middle class people you know some decades back but things were extremely bad for non-whites and we really should not go back there you know we need to and and you know early in the in the season i think it was Graydon who said you know he's a prince kit's a princess when we're in charge, we don't have to do things the way our parents did. So, you know, the show has set up, you know, good rulers change things for the better. And here we have, you know, that is, yeah. Um, and I don't think it's random or accidental that the crone, you know, two of the major things are she wants things to go back to the way they were, as expressed through Eric and Sorsha, the, the, the fake ones, uh, the fake Sorsha and, and the possessed eric and she wants to be in control she wants slaves so yeah because people who say let's let's go back to the way things used to be you know yeah a lot of them are fascists they want to turn society they, they want to turn america into a dictatorship <clears throat> i i really love how relevant the show is how how well it communicates these progressive values and, yeah, uh, Mad Mardigan's voice gets Kit, uh, you know, back to, to normal kind of thing. I gotta say, okay, I'm, I'm just really, really quickly gonna... Um, so who 